it's Karen with Yes Please Paper Crafts. And today I'm going to be using this Floral Romance paper pad and making some base pages. So I started this project earlier this year and I have three other videos already on my channel where I shared uh, some base pages that I had made and also some embellishments. So back in March, I decided to participate in Calvin Ball. And so I got sidetracked with doing that in March and then in April, I participated in some YouTube hops and started back working on some organization projects. And so this kind of got set aside in my craft room. And uh, so today I just wanted to do something a little easy and I decided to pull this project back out and work on it. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be building six different base pages and I picked the, the papers out for uh, these six base pages in uh, the video that is part three. So if you want to see that part of the process, uh, you can go ahead and go back and watch that video. Now, I had completely forgotten what I was even planning to do with those uh, six uh, page kits that I had built. <laughs> so I had to go back and watch my videos. That's one big advantage of being on YouTube and making YouTube videos is uh, if I forget something, I can go back and, and watch my video again, <laughs> which is what I ended up doing. Okay, so um, what I have here is I just have some of the paper that's still left over that I haven't used yet. Uh, these are my paper scraps, the large paper scraps. I have um, one of these that has uh, all of the things that I'm using for cut aparts. And uh, then I have the base pages that I had started. Uh, well, these are actually completed. I have the first six base pages that I made. And so I'll just go ahead and uh, flip through those real quick so y'all can get an idea of uh, what I'm doing here with these different uh, base pages that I'm creating. And uh, they're very basic base pages. These are just foundations for using as a scrapbook layout or a starter for a scrapbook layout. Uh, so once I have some pictures and uh, I want to make a scrapbook layout, I can just flip through all of these different base pages that I have and use that as a starter to create a layout. And I actually got this idea from Janet over at RTS Scrapbooking. Um, she has a bunch of videos on her channel about doing base pages and I'll put links to her channel uh, in the description um, below if you want to check out her videos. But those are the first six uh, base pages that I had created. And then I have these page kits where I am going to be uh, building my next six base pages. So one of the things I wanted to mention is that I have the pieces for my base pages stored in these record sleeves from Amazon. And I was recommending the checkout store brand and it's a three mil uh, weight or thickness of plastic. And they're very nice, I do like them a lot. But my friend Rosalie was telling me that when she clicked on my link, it was taking her to a different uh, style which had a flap. And one of the things that I realized was that the checkout store was reusing the link and putting different products behind my link. And so if you're looking for these uh, checkout store brand three mil uh, record sleeves, they may not be available. And so I've been listing alternatives in my uh, different videos. If you look at the video description, I'll have links to all of the different products that I'm using in my videos and I will share the link for that. And so I started just listing alternatives because uh, that link that I was using to recommend this particular product was not taking people to that product. So I just wanted to uh, make sure that I mentioned that. And then uh, Rosalie found this one that she purchased instead, which is a much heavier duty one. It's a four mil product. This one's from BCW. It's also record sleeves. This one's 12 and three quarters by 13 inches and it does not have a flap. And what's really interesting about this is it looks like it's blue. <laughs> I thought that was really weird. I said, oh, that looks blue. But if you just take one of these out um, and just use, use it separately, it is clear. It's just that with all of them there, it, it does look blue. But I just wanted to show you all how much uh, thicker this is. So here is the record sleeve that's the four mil and you can see how much sturdier this is than the one that is uh, only three mil. And uh, so I think that uh, it cost about the same or maybe a little bit more for this four mil product, uh, but it's super nice. And I definitely uh, would recommend uh, that uh, y'all definitely check these out if you like the record sleeves. 
because this one is a little bit sturdier, actually quite a bit sturdier than the uh, one that I was originally uh, using. Okay, so that's probably what I'm going to be using from now on in my uh, craft room is this one uh, from BCW and it's a four mil product. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at these uh, different uh, kits that I have here. I'm calling it a kit. I just put together papers. Uh, some of these I've already added embellishments or border strips to. Um, and I did, I did get started. I went back and watched rewatched my video. And just to uh, kind of remind myself what my ideas were around each one of these base pages. And so let's start with page number seven here and talk a little bit about um, what we're going to do for this base page. So the only thing that I had in this uh, base page kit were two papers. I had uh, this 12 by 12 floral paper and then also this green paper. And this was a much larger scrap. I had a border punched out on one side. And uh, so I'm going to do a band design. And so I cut this down and I made it a little bit smaller so that you could see the floral at the top and the bottom. And I thought that was really pretty. Uh, so the next thing that I wanted to do is just try to find something to dress up the edge here. And uh, so I went through the different strips of paper that I had available and the border strips. There's a paper in this paper pad that has uh, just all the border strips. And so this piece right here was cut from uh, that border strip paper. And uh, so I thought that would be really pretty uh, to put this border at the top there. Isn't that gorgeous? So I just love that. So then it says, my heart is with the flowers. And uh, once I had this put together, I thought this would make a perfect page to do um, a layout documenting my garden. Because uh, in the front of my house, I have all of these flower beds. And they were full of dirt and weeds for years because um, I was having, once I moved into my house, I had a problem with my backyard flooding and my house almost flooded several times. And I had to have the drainage in my, on my property redone. And the first company that did the drainage and also redid my driveway uh, didn't do a very good job and made the situation even worse. And so it took me several years to get another a couple companies to come out and redo the drainage and also had to have all the concrete removed and it messed up my front yard really bad and my flower beds were just full of uh, weeds and dirt and <laughs> some overgrown bushes. It was really bad, but I didn't really want to spend time uh, doing anything with it because uh, I knew that it was just probably going to get torn apart. And uh, so anyway, that work was finally finished back in uh, the end of 2019. And so last year I was able to finally get my flower beds put in in my front yard. So uh, I thought it would be fun to maybe create a layout and get, take a couple of pictures from my flower beds. And uh, so I created a couple of mats here. These are mats to fit four by four pictures. And so I thought that would be really pretty uh, to maybe put that right there in the middle. And I might make this a little bit bigger by doing maybe that. And so we have um, those two photo mats plus the border. And I would probably just say that's probably going to be my title. Uh, but I might, I might actually look through some of my stickers and see if I have something that might work that would be, that would add even more gold to this layout. So um, then after I uh, did this, now this paper right here is a really pale pink paper. And I thought that would be super pretty to go with this color scheme. And then here are all my embellishments that I have uh, for this uh, that I've been working on as I've been building my base pages. And so I kind of went through those and I found these little um, ones here that have this gold foiling. And I used a mirror card and a punch from Stampin' Up! And I made these little uh, pieces that look like postage stamps. Aren't those pretty? <laughs> so I pulled three of those out. I think that's going to be perfect for this layout. And then the other thing that I did was I took some of my leftover mirror card and I used a new punch that I have that's from Stampin' Up. I'm uh, not Stampin' Up. <laughs> it's a new punch from Creative Memories and it's called the Spring Leaf Punch. And uh, it's this punch right here. It just They just came out with this a couple weeks ago and it's really an awesome punch and it punches out in two separate pieces. So I'm just going to pop this out so you can see. It's actually two pieces. But I think it's really pretty to put it back together um, because it does give a lot of detail 
to that leaf. And I just think that doing it out of the gold mirror card is just super pretty. And so I thought I would punch out three of those leaves using that uh, gold mirror card in this pinch and uh, use those on this layout as well. And then I might try to bring in some flowers. Um, I think it would be pretty to maybe bring in some white or light pink flowers uh, to go with the leaves. And uh, I think that's going to be a really cute base page. I might also bring in some washi tape. Uh, I have to see, maybe I might put a strip of washi tape right here, like a really thin gold strip of washi tape. That might be pretty there as well. Okay, so that is what I'm going to do for this page. Now, I don't want to spend time in the video gluing things down. So what I'm going to do is just talk about each page and the design. And then I'm going to go away and uh, put the page together. And at the end, I'll come back and share with you all of the different six pages that I build um, in this video. Okay, so here is the base page kit that I made for page number eight. And uh, for this one, I had this background paper. And I've already started to cut this apart. But I took my jumbo circle template from Creative Memories. And I just cut out this really large circle from this paper. And uh, so I think that's really pretty. And I just love the way that that turned out. And then I decided that I wanted to take these corners and cut each one of the corners out. I'm not going to be using that on this base page, but I'm going to add it into my embellishments. And I'm going to use that on another page. Isn't that pretty though? You can see here, like if I go and just put this at the corner, uh, just how pretty that's going to be added to another page. Okay, so I'm going to be fussy cutting the four corners out. I also want to go ahead and fussy cut out this uh, butterfly and then also I'm going to attempt to cut out these letters and see if I can use that on a layout as well. So the other papers that I have in this kit are a cardstock. This is from Basil and it's the uh, vanilla cardstock and then I also had another paper from the paper pad and it's just a uh, kind of a champagne color. It's a tone on tone pattern. And I just thought that was really pretty. And so that's what I'm going to be using uh, to create this layout. And so I think what I'm going to do is use this uh, vanilla cardstock as my background. And then use this other piece as a layer or a mat behind the background. And then I'm going to use uh, this circle. And I thought my, what might be really pretty is to take another paper and create a circle that's larger or maybe some smaller circles. And just work with some circular elements onto this uh, base page and see if I, what I can come up with. So that's kind of the plan uh, for this base page. And so I'm going to work on that and then I'll come back at the end and share with you uh, what I end up creating. <laughs> okay, so for base page number nine, I'm working with some large scraps that I had left over from some other pages. And so I have this uh, large square floral I have this gray tone on tone paper and then I'm going to be using uh, this vanilla cardstock as my background and then I have this large cardstock that is yellow and I'm going to be cutting this down and just using a small part of this on this layout. Uh, so the plan for this base page was to take these uh, different pieces and just layer them and uh, so I think what I'm going to do is probably uh, put this paper, maybe, I want to show off the floral, so I think I might lay that paper, which is the gray one, down. And then put this one across like that so I can see uh, both the gray and this one. And then I'm going to take a piece of this paper and just cut a strip of it, maybe, and lay it across. And maybe turn it into a banner. And I think that's going to, it's going to be a very simple base page, but I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, with this one. Okay, so this next base page kit I have is for two pages. It's for page 10 and page 11. And I have two 12 by 12 papers here that I'm going to cut in half. And I'm going to use a happy horizontal design. And uh, so these are my two pages or papers that I'm going to use to create my background. So I have uh, this paper here that I'm going to cut apart. And then I'm also going to cut this one in half. And I will piece them back together and create two layouts. Now this is not intended to be a double page spread. Uh, I'm just going to create two completely separate pages here. 
And uh, so I'm going to take that and let's just go ahead and I could do it either this way where I, I cut them uh, apart this way or I could do it um, this way. And I'm not exactly sure how I'd like to do this, but I'm thinking maybe I'm thinking maybe I might do it this way because if I do decide that I wanted to do a double page spread, I think that would be very pretty to have maybe this paper on the uh, left hand side. And then I could do this one on the right hand side and then have this piece kind of in the middle. So maybe I'll do that. I'll, I'll cut them vertically in half. And then the, these were the border strips that I had in there. I did have uh, the, board, the 12 by 12 uh, paper from the paper pad that had all of the different strips, the border strips. And I cut them all apart and uh, just so that I would have uh, all of these pieces to play with. And then I also used a few of my border punches and just created uh, some borders from some of the uh, papers that I have. So I have this uh, border here, which is a light pink. It's actually the same color as that paper, so I probably won't use that one. Uh, but I have uh, this uh, strip that came from one of the papers that has black and gold foil on it. And then also this one, which is uh, kind of a light blue color. And so I have uh, this one with the birds. And then also this one right here, uh, this is uh, a frame and a border punch. It reminds me of crowns. I think that's really pretty. Okay, so I have that to play with. And so um, probably some of these are not going to work because uh, I guess I could potentially put the words going in that direction. Uh, but I kind of like when I have words to, for them to go across this way. <laughs> so I don't know if I'll use any of these ones that have words on them. Uh, but... Uh, Maybe like this one here with the little flowers would be pretty. Um, so let's go ahead and see maybe what might work. And I'll start with uh, this side here. I could uh, I'll also potentially use some washi tape, but isn't that pretty? I like that. And uh, so I could do that on one side. And I do have two of these because I had two different, I had two papers from the paper pad that were the border strips. And so I cut those apart multiple times. And so I do have two of those. I really like that a lot. It brings that green in uh, from this paper. And I think that's very pretty. Let's see what else we have here. Um, all of these have words on them. I do have this one here, which is super pretty. This is just out of a, a light pink cardstock. I don't think that's just enough of a contrast though between those papers. I really do like the green better. And uh, I have this one here. That would be pretty though. I don't know if I would want to put it in this color. Um, but if I if I cut this border strip out of uh, another color, that could be pretty. But I almost like it without. I almost like it just plain, uh, those three pieces. And then of course this border strip, it, would, it wouldn't really work <laughs> going that way. I think it would work much better. Uh, with the birds uh, going this way. <laughs> okay, and then we have this one here. Uh, and I'm still leaning toward the one with the with the green and the flowers. And then I also have this one. This was one of my favorite ones when I was actually uh, playing around with this particular page kit. I had uh, laid this border strip across and I really think that that's pretty. And I could potentially do something like this. And uh, maybe I could pull in um, another strip of this paper. Because I think I have more of that paper. And I think that would be very, very pretty. I wonder what this would look like if I flipped it around the other way. There's not much of a contrast between those papers. But that's very pretty going the other direction. So I think I might do this. I think I will punch another border strip uh, from this using the, I think this is a lace border from Creative Memories. Um, I think that's what I used there. I'll have to go back and, and see if I can figure out which punch that was. And then I will do a border strip of that and then this border here and make uh, two base pages. And I could potentially use them uh, individually as uh, single pages or I could make a double page spread because I'm going to um, do the same design on both sides. And I think that would be very pretty. So I think that's what I'm going to do with these two base pages. 
Okay, so for page number 12, I have two different patterned papers and then also a cardstock. And this is a really pretty light blue cardstock. And my plan for this layout was to do a happy horizontal and use a corner rounder and also map the layout. And this is something that I have seen Janet at RTS Scrapbooking do, and I really love the way that it looks. And it, it's a very feminine style. I think it's very well suited for these papers that I have here. So basically, I will just take the two papers and uh, cut two pieces and then leave enough that I would have a border around it. And then I will round the corners of this inside piece and just make it uh, look a little bit more feminine by giving it a rounded corner. And I think that's going to be really pretty. I think the only other thing that I might want to do here is to add some washi tape or some a border strip here in the middle uh, where I have the two papers joining and maybe even one of the border strips from the uh, kit that I was just looking at I could put that across here uh, so let's just take a look I have all of these pieces let's just pull these out and uh, see real quick what would uh, maybe work for this page now I'm going to use these two green ones uh, so I'm not going to pull those but everything else is fair game uh, so let's kind of take a look and uh, just play with this because this is one of my most favorite things to do when I'm building uh, these base pages is just to play around with the different papers and uh, things like uh, washi tape and border strips just to kind of, you know, get see what kind of a uh, look you'd like to get. So uh, this one I think uh, could work. Uh, I think it's a little bit busy, uh, especially with this dually paper and then that floral. Okay, then we have this one right here, which is super pretty with those birds. So I could do something like that. That's really cute. Okay, so that's a choice. All right, um, we also have this paper here that has this um, kind of a Baroque, I think it's called a Baroque frame punch. And it to me, it reminds me of crowns, but that's really pretty as well. I love this one. So that might have to be the one we pick, but let's try a few other ones out because I just like to look and see what my choices are here. Um, that one's pretty too. I'm not really loving that one. I also have some of these ones that have the um, words. So let's check out a few of these. Now this one, I was planning to uh, fussy cut out the little scallops. And so I could also uh, do a couple of borders together and um, kind of make this a little bit more of a larger element on my page. Um, so this is just a strip of flowers. And we have this one here. This one I can also uh, fussy cut out the scallops. And uh, that's really pretty. Okay, then we have the one with the words. I like that one as well. So many choices. And then this one with just some flowers. Here's some one with the black words. That's super pretty. Look how, it's so many different choices. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to just pick one. Okay, here are some words that are in a uh, lighter color, almost the same color as this blue. Now, one problem I might have is I'm going to be cutting this down because I'm going to have a border all the way around. And so I wouldn't be able to use all of that. I would have to chop it off. So that probably wouldn't be a good choice. Uh, so probably wouldn't use any of these ones that have words on them just because I wouldn't be able to use the entire quote. Um, so that might not actually work too well. I also have uh, this one here. That's, I think, a little bit too busy because these papers are very busy. I think I'm going to go with this one here and maybe some washi tape. Uh, but, yeah, I love using these border strips to kind of, uh, you know, cover up the seam. It does a couple of things. It covers up the seam between the two papers, and then it also adds this more uh, of a decorative look to your layout. And so I just really think that this is super pretty together. And so I'll probably uh, cut these two papers down and then I will uh, go ahead and uh, lay this one across um, and then maybe use another, uh, maybe a washi tape or something, but I think that's really pretty. So I'm not sure if I would use it this way or that way. I'll probably use it this way because you can really see that design stand out a little bit more. Uh, against this paper. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and work on finishing up these base pages and then I'll come back and I'll share all six of my finished base pages with you guys.
Okay, so I finished the base pages that I was working on, and I'm going to go ahead and share them, starting with page number seven. Uh, this was the one where I was going to do the band design, and I had this green paper. I cut it down, uh, made it a little bit smaller, and then I added this border strip and also some washi tape, and then a couple of mats. These are four and a quarter by four and a quarter mats, so I can go ahead and put two four by four pictures. And then also with this base page, I've included a few embellishments that I want to um, add to this page when I go ahead and create the scrapbook layout. And so I'm going to uh, keep this one uh, together in one of these record sleeves with the embellishments. And uh, when I go to uh, work on this page, I'll have all of this uh, together. Okay, so that's page number seven. Okay, so I'm going to skip over base page number eight and do that one at the very end because that was probably the most challenging page out of all the ones I created. And I have a few extra things that I wanted to share. So uh, this next one is base page number nine. And for this one, it was very simple. I was just going to take this vanilla cardstock and layer some papers. And I did not change the size of these two papers. I have this uh, gray tone on tone paper and then the floral. I just layered one on top of the other. And then I had a whole sheet of uh, 12 by 12 cardstock in this yellow color. And I just uh, cut this down to a three inch strip and uh, created a little banner out of it. And then the last thing that I did was I took some pink cardstock and I just made a mat here for a four by six photo. And then as I was uh, working on this, I just kind of glanced over at my embellishment tray over here and I saw these butterflies in there and I just thought, wouldn't that be pretty to have these butterflies kind of flying up the side of this layout? And so that's going to be the design for this base page number nine. And uh, this one's going to be super easy, I think, to do. I can just find a four by six photo and put it here, add a title and some em more embellishments and this one will be done. <laughs> so I think this one turned out really pretty. Okay, so for pages 10 and 11, I just had two pattern papers and I was going to cut them in half and create a happy horizontal. And uh, so this is what I ended up doing here. And I could use these either individually or as a double page spread. Uh, I think this would be really pretty as a double page layout. And uh, so what I did here was I just cut this paper in half and cut this one in half. And then I just uh, added a couple of borders I did already have one of these borders and I just uh, used some more of that paper from the paper pad and the it's a lace trim border punch from Creative Memories and also this uh, border strip from one of the uh, pattern papers and I just think that this is super pretty. I just love how this green pulls in the green from the butterflies and the florals uh, in this uh, other pattern paper. So uh, I think that one's going to be really easy. Uh, to create a double page spread from, although I could use this to create two individual layouts as well. Okay, so this is base page number 12, and this one is also a happy horizontal, and uh, this is inspired by Janet at RTS Scrapbooking, uh, because she does this quite a bit where she creates a layout and she rounds the corner and then she mats her layout, and I just think it's really pretty. I think it adds a really feminine touch by having these rounded corners. And uh, so what I did here was I just took uh, two different pattern papers and then I used a border strip. This is the Baroque Frame Punch from Creative Memories and then a strip of washi tape. And then here I have uh, one of the cut aparts I had punched out with a circle and then I just layered a scallop circle behind that and I uh, used a mirror card and it's uh, like a shiny gold, it's the same a mirror card that I used uh, to punch out those leaves on that layout earlier that I shared with y'all. And then I also have this tag. And uh, so I think that's really pretty as well. And I think this one is really, really pretty. Uh, this is probably my favorite out of all the ones I created. I just, I don't know, there's just something about it. I just love this border with that washi tape. <laughs> Super pretty. Okay, so this is page number eight. And this was the page that I wanted to use the circles. And so I did run into a little bit of a challenge because my circles ended up being much larger than I was expecting. So originally I was planning to use this vanilla cardstock as my background and then mat the 
the layout with this pattern paper. But because my circles were so large, I decided to just eliminate the mat and then just use this pattern paper as my background. And uh, so the other thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about for this layout was how I created the different circles on this base page. I used three different tools from Creative Memory. So the first one I wanna talk a little bit about is this custom cutting system from Creative Memories. It has three different blades and depending on which blade you use, it cuts a different size circle. And that's because the blade, uh, the distance between the guide on this and the blade is in different places depending on the color. So you can see the red one is much closer. I think the uh, green one is the next one and then the blue one is the furthest apart. And so when you use these with the patterns to cut your circles, it creates different size circles. Okay, so this is the jumbo circle pattern. And uh, so you put the blade guides into the track there and you can either create a circle on the inside or you can flip it around or, and you can create a circle along the outside. So each one of the blades would create two different size circles. So that means you can cut six different size circles using this one pattern. And uh, Creative Memory sells other patterns. They have a set of smaller circles, also rectangles, um, ovals, and gemstones, and also a large hexagon. And uh, the, each one of these patterns will also come with a template. And you can use the template to help you to figure out exactly where you want to cut your circle. So this is the biggest advantage, I think, of the custom cutting system, is that you can visually see where you're going to be cutting before you make your cut. And you can use this custom cutting system to cut your photographs into shape without chopping off somebody's head. <laughs> and uh, so basically how this works is, um, say for instance, I don't want to include this uh, pink label, but I want to have this uh, girl's face and also the words here, uh, these flowers up here and this word. I can just put the template on top here and try to figure out what the best circle would be. Uh, on here that would incorporate all of the different elements that I would like to include and eliminate this uh, pink one and not fall off the page. So you can see that I wouldn't want to use one of the larger circles because not only would it include some of this pink label, but it would also fall off my page. And if I, if I use, well, I could probably use one of the ones in the middle, probably the blue one would be the best. It would be the smaller of the circles. I wouldn't really get as much of the floral as I like, but sometimes you can't really get everything that you want into the circle because, you know, then it would start uh, giving me some of this uh, pink label. So that's basically how that tool works. And I think it's really awesome to use if you want to be able to see where you're going to cut before you cut it. Okay, so the other circles that I have on here that are the green circles. I used another tool from Creative Memories. It's brand new. It just came out, uh, I think about a month ago and it's already sold out. But Creative Memories is bringing this back and it's going to be back in stock, I believe in September. Okay, so uh, for this one, the really cool thing about this tool is that it creates circles from three inches all the way up to 11 and a half inches. And what you do uh, to adjust the tool is you just unscrew this and it will slide up and down the track. And then you just pick the size of circle that you want to create. Like for instance, if I wanted to create an eight inch circle, I would just move it until this little black line is on the eight and then I would tighten this down. And then you would put it on your page. You would press down on this and hold this in, which releases the blade that's right here. You can see the blade is, is uh, not activated and you can actually put your finger there because there's no blade but when you push down and then press this button the blade pops out and uh, this is a really awesome tool now i have the martha stewart circle cutter and this is very similar to that but i would have to say that this one from creative memories is super awesome i'm in love with this circle cutter it is so easy to use it cuts such clean circles and uh, the other thing that's really neat about it is that you can use the journaling pens from creative memories and put that into this hole here and you can use this to draw circles as well. So it's really a lot of fun. Now the disadvantages to using this uh, circle cutter is that you it's very hard visually to be able to see exactly where your circle is going to cut. 
which is why I don't think it's a replacement for the custom cutting system. I think it's just an additional tool that you can use to, to create circles with more variety in sizes. Okay, so the third tool that I used to create these circles uh, was a punch. And this is the uh, dotted leaf punch. It's called the dotted leaf circle. And with this punch, you can just take any six by six inch piece of paper and turn it into a doily like this. Isn't that pretty? I just love that. So my plan for this base page is that I will uh, print out a photograph and then cut that photograph into a circle and put my photograph right here. So I think that's going to be really, really pretty. Okay, so this base page also has this element up here, which is more of an oval shape. And I actually did fussy cut that from one of the cut apart pages. And you can see here, this is the element that I cut out out of this uh, cut apart page. And then I just tucked it behind my circles. Okay, so I really was disappointed when I layered my circles and this was the best way um, that I found to layer the circles and still be able to show off most of the uh, paper here. I covered up this butterfly, so that was really disappointing. But then I remembered that I had another base page that I had created and I had not glued it down yet. And I had used this same paper because there's two of each paper from this paper pad. So this was the base page that I had originally used. Um, and you can see here, I used it kind of as a mat for another, you know, for the layout. And I tucked, I kind of cut around these photo corners and just tucked this paper in. So I had not glued anything down. So I went ahead and took this apart and I was able to, to gut the inside of it out. And uh, that gave me some more pieces that I could use for this layout. And so I was able to do some more fuzzy cutting. And so that was super exciting because I was able to get another butterfly so that I can go ahead and I can just pop that butterfly right here. And I think that's really going to be pretty because it's going to give this layout even more detail. So I was also able to cut out the uh, large rows and I uh, have this butterfly here. And then um, also I cut out some of these leaves. And so I thought it would be really pretty if I put this uh, rosebud up here somewhere and then these leaves and kind of pop this up a little bit onto some foam tape and give it a little bit of dimension. And I think that's really uh, going to add a really cool element to this page. Now you can see here, I also did fussy cut out the photo corners and some of these little uh, letters from the words that was on this uh, page. Uh, but I'm not going to be using that for this base page but I will put it with my other embellishments. And so I'll have that to use on another layout. And then I also had this little circular element that I cut out as well. Okay, and then I have uh, this paper that was still left over. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with that, uh, but I just decided to keep it for now until I decide if maybe I wanna cut out more of the leaves. Um, but I just have that available. So isn't this pretty? I just love that I'm gonna be able to use these extra pieces that were actually um, getting covered up by that other base page and I was able to cut this butterfly out um, because I think that's going to make a really uh, pretty addition to this base page. Okay, so I hope I have given you guys some ideas and also some inspiration for how you can use your paper pads to create base pages. And in my next video, which will be part five, I will be picking the papers for the next six base pages. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up because it helps me to know what type of content you'll like to see on my channel. And if you would like to see more videos, please subscribe. I would love to have you join my channel. Okay, I do have a short video clip of my two dogs, Bella and Lily Bell, that is at the end of this video. So if you want to see that, stick around to the end. But that's all I have. So I hope y'all have an awesome day and I hope to see you next time. Bye now. Hey girls. What y'all doing? Ah. Nothing? Ah. Ah. Can you say hi to the ah. YouTube people? Ah. Ah. And what else? Ah. Ah. Yeah. Ah. And uh, what else you want to say? Ah. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you being my crafty helper today in my room? Are you helping me? Hi, Miss Lillibel, what you doing? Are you being a good girl? <laughs> ah. 
Yeah. You're being good. Good. Okay. Can y'all sit? Lily Bell, can you sit? Can you down? That's it. Up. <laughs> can you go down? Down. That's it. Up. <laughs> is it opposite day today? <laughs> it is. <laughs> Have y'all been helping me in my craft room? Yeah. And you're tired and you're hungry and now you want something to eat? you one okay hold on okay so can you do a down <laughs> lily bell down good girl bella down good job lily bell down <laughs> can you back up you can <laughs> can you back up yeah. I, I can't get i can't get you in the camera if you don't back up can y'all back up back up back up back up Back up. Uh, back up. Back up, back up. Okay, you ready for your treat? <laughs> Can you down? You did? No, you didn't. You no, you didn't. <laughs> Miss Bella. Can you do a down? Holy Bell. <laughs> well, you've got a lot to say now, huh? <laughs> Okay, can y'all do a down? <laughs> That's an up. Can you do a down? There you go, good girl. Miss Bella, down. Bella, down. <laughs> All right, awesome. Okay, we have one for Bella and one for Lily Bell. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay, that's all we have. See y'all next time. Bye now.